Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wintersteiger live streaming event and our product news for 2021. My name is Christopher Schiehauer. I'm the head of the business field Siedmech at Wintersteiger. And it's my pleasure to guide you through the today's event. Let me tell you, the whole team of the Wintersteiger development worked intensively hard over the last months to develop our new products, add additional in, in, uh, innovations and features, and of course, tested for many, many hours the new products in the field. Thanks a lot for the passionate teamwork to the whole Wintersteiger team. On the other hand side, I believe it's essential for a successful development to have the right partners and suppliers, which adjust to our needs and go with us hand in hand for a real development journey. But most important are our customers. This is you, which are very open to us with new ideas, sharing new processes and give us even an inside look into your applications to really understand what are the needs of the future products and what can we really improve to improve your breathing process. And this is why today is an exciting day for us and we are really happy to have you joining this session and presenting our new products and innovations. And hopefully we can give you a deep insight into the new features we have developed in the last months. Let me give you a short overview about the agenda. Um, each session basically is going to last around 20 minutes. After every presentation, we are going to go into the questions, which you can answer us on the live chat function, which you hopefully already discovered. So please use this functionality and ask questions. During the presentations, we are going to answer the questions. In parallel, the whole sales team of Wintersteiger is available by phone and email. So please ask specific questions, of course, directly, or even already make an appointment for a live demonstration of any Wintersteiger product. So 20 minutes for each session, we will have time for some questions which we are going to select. We're going to start with the plot draw motion seat drills, followed by the dynamic disc plus. Then we will get an overview from the Altea software platform and the long distance drone from Dell Air, which is the automatic phenotyping solution. The next product will be the split and age, the double plot combine from Wintersteiger. And the next session then round about uh, 2.30, our time is the easy breed breeding software. We are going to present the whole data management software for the breeding process. Last but not least, followed by the Quantum Pro. Uh, and we're looking forward to start the sessions. So now it's time to start. I think we are ready. And I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Thomas Hippesreuter. He's going to present you the plot draw motion. I would say sit back, relax, and enjoy our first session. Hello and welcome to the Wintersteiger product presentation 2021. My name is Thomas Hippesreuter. I'm the head of the customer service of Siebmech and I will introduce to you the plot and row motion. I would like to start at the front of the machine so we can go through the frame and up to the operator platform and talk a little bit about the seating system. The plot and row motion are the first electrical drill seeders produced by Wintersteiger. These machines are also part of our system of control unit and frame uh, for all our new seeders. So also the Dynamic Disk Plus I will introduce to you afterwards is part of this platform system. So we have a very flexible frame system that can easily be adjusted to all of our customers' needs. And we have a very flexible control unit system so there it is also easily possible to install or retrofit any other distribution system you would like to add additionally after your first planting seasons or your first experiences. What we have standing here 
is just a normal plot motion, a regular machine with just one belted cone in a pretty, pretty easy equipped machine. Um, of course, also a row motion system is available. And due to our flexible control unit and frame system, it is also possible for us to build double or triple plot motions or row motion machines. So you can plant two or even three plots at the same time. Basically, these would be three machines mounted on one bigger frame, and all those planting units can be controlled either separately or from one whole control unit, so they have to plant um, the same plots all together. Also possible would be, for example, a pull-type machine for a smaller tractor or applications where you want to have a little bit less compression on the soil. Or also, these machines are available as a kit, so you can mount them on any cedars frame you want. So I would like to walk around that machine we have standing here with you. And as I've already mentioned, we have a flexible frame system. What we have here is the lowest frame possible. So if you have a fertilizer or a more complicated seeding system, the frame gets higher. Another thing to mention on that machine are the wheel carriers down here. So those wheel carriers can be adjusted to the proper height for planting. For example, if you're planting on beds. And basically, this would be the same wheel carrier we use for pool type machines. But therefore, there is also a second tire option available with a bigger tire. As you can see on the, on the screen, the tires on, those, on that machine are pretty narrow and wider tires would be available for less compressed soil on the ground. What we also can see in there is the Great Plains openers. Those openers are mounted staggered. They are very versatile, so you can use them for nearly every planting condition, from rather light soil to a heavy soil, or even minimum till conditions for planting. What we have done on that machine is the, the openers are mounted in staggered positions. So basically, there's always a short and a long opener. Uh, that maximizes the material going through between the openers. What we also did take care of on our new machines is that we have hooks to secure the machine on the trailer um, during the transport situation. Or they are also good for us when we are transporting the machines to our customers. And of course, we have equipped our machines with solid, rigid support legs on the back that you can see here, and also on the front, so that the machine has a very good stand during the winter when you have stored the machine. Further at the back of that machine, uh, we have mounted closing tines for closing the seat furrow. So, they are just mounted on a simple square tube frame. And we have here um, some parts so, you, so that you can adjust them so that they are working properly and you get the perfect conditions for your plants to grow. At the end of the machine, there are mounted solid steps to go up to our operator platform. Of course, the operator platform um, achieves a CE conformity. We have, as mentioned, solid steps with a hand railing, which are very nice when you have a higher machine. On that low machine, they are also nice to have, but they would not be necessary. But as mentioned, especially on bigger machines that are very much higher from the platform, they are very nice to have to get up to the machine. What we also did, we took care of the operator, and we tried to mount everything as ergonomically as possible, so that the operator can reach everything easily when sitting on the machine. Also for the operator, we have decided to go with very comfortable seats on our new Cedars platform, so that they have a nice day sitting on the machine, as the work up on the machine is already hard enough. So, after walking around the machine now, I would like to go up and show you some features on the control unit. As the machine is started, 
what you see here just, is just the main menu. So where we have a quick set, you can create simple trials um, on that screen. We have guided calibration that I will show to you in a few minutes. And we have the settings, so you can adjust um, the machine to your language or um, to your measurements, like from, from European to imperial measurements. And I would like to start with the quick drill. So with entering the quick set, you can either use the push buttons or you can also directly push on the screen. And so we are in the quick set menu. So we can adjust here the plot steep. So how many plots do you have in one pass? The plots wide, which just means how many plots next to each other do you want to plant on the field? We have, of course, the plot length and the alley length. So it's just that easy. For example, we could just e enter here a six meter plot with 600 centimeters. As you can see, I'm already using the touch screen or um, even the, the buttons on the side. So we have 50 centimeter alleyway. Then we have the feeding system. You can adjust on that. In that case, of course, it is, it is a simple plot seed. We have the funnel for feeding the belted cone. Um, as we are only um, in the hall, we will have the wheel sensor correction to simulation. So that's something that is nice to have if you want to play around a little bit with the machine um, before using it for planting. And so we can just start planting. Here, the machine tells us to move to the first plot into the direction and the machine also tells us how fast we can go. For example, we would need to go at least 0.2 kilometers an hour or a maximum of 4.3 kilometers an hour. And with just a simple button, we start to the seeding menu. So you see the plot we will first enter. You see that we are two meters in front of the plot now with the minus two meters. And so we can just start going. You can see everything is moving. I can speed up a little bit as we are in the simulation. You can see here the speed is adjusting as I'm pressing. So we are going faster and faster. And you can still see here the maximum speed during the planting procedure. What we see here is how far we are in the current, uh, absolutely on the field. So we are currently on the, now we are in the second plot, so we have passed more than six meters. And on the upper line, you can see that how far we are in the plot that we are just planting at the moment. So as I've mentioned before, you can also create small, tri small trials on that machine. Just press create new trial. Then with that button, we can say, OK, um, we have our new field with, for example, 50 plots in one, in one pass. We, have, we can enter a name of the trial. So at the moment, it's just named unknown trial, but we can also name it um, test one, for example. So that's how that works. And here, we can now start creating blocks that will be reused all over the field again and again. So for example, we'd make our first, our first block with a plot length of five, cent, 50, five meters, 50 centimeters alleyway. We can then enter 10 plots on that. And we can enter a distance to the next block of plots in that case with 2.5 meters. So now you can see the first ID is entered. You see the, the plot length, the alley length, um, how many plots will be planted, and the distance to the next block. We can then enter a second block, for example, with seven meters and an alleyway um, of one meter and the distance to the next plot would normally be the alleyway. 
as the control unit takes that as a, as a standard to use to reuse the alleyway to the distance. But we can again enter here 2.5 meters as, as the distance. And so now the machine has two IDs, ID 1 and ID 2. Of course, it will start with ID 1, will plant the first 10 plots. Then there will be the bigger, the bigger offset. For example, um, you, have to, you, need the, you need the bigger way to pass through uh, with a sprayer or something like that. And then the next block with ID2 will be planted. After ID2, the machine will start again with ID1 and so on and so on, till all the plots in one past have been planted. So the next menu point would be the calibration. As I've mentioned, we have an easy machine just with a belted cone. Here we have the wheel sensor calibration. It shows us the actual calibration factor. And now we would go and start driving through the field, measuring then the distance. And after entering the, dish, the actual distance, the machine would use that new calibration factor during the planting. So the advantage we see with the wheel sensor is that we have a very high resolution during the planting. So we get a signal at least every 10 milliseconds uh, from the telemetric wheel. And if you use GPS, we could also correct that wheel sensor information with the GPS system. Then we would have the settings, for example, um, in the settings, there is also the new diagnosis. So we could do a diagnosis of the components of the machine. Like, for example, we can turn on the light on the right side. You can see that the machine runs on 12 volt. That will that are supplied by the tractor. Um, yeah, and all other options that are available on the machine are shown here on the complete machine or we can go to the drive. The PDS drive is the, is the belted cone. We can adjust here the speed of the belted cone and we can turn it on. Um, or we could turn on the road to sit distributor and turn it off. We can lift the filling funnel. Just, it's just an opportunity to check the machine what the machine is doing, if everything is working properly. And we can also stop that again. So here we can see we are in diagnostic mode. And if there is an error occurring, we will see that error up here. So that's what I wanted you to show about our new control system. I think it's a very intuitive control system. And I would like to hand over back to Christopher who has already gotten the first questions. Thank you, Thomas. So you're going to join me for the question time now. And one question we received is, uh, can you tell us more about the GPS options? Which possibilities do we have for GPS connection to the tractor? Yeah, um, we can at least hook up on the Trimble system that can provide us uh, the distance-based pulse that we normally use for the correction of the telemetric wheel. We have also the possibility with the new TopCon system that also has the ability to provide us uh, that distance-based pulse. Or we can even go um, with an area-based pulse if you have a GIS plan field and your GPS system can give out the signal with 5 volt or 12 volt and last but not least, currently we are working with one of our partners you've mentioned before um, on a complete GPS system. So we will be able to provide a complete GPS system in the future or also the possibility to hook up to an existing GPS system like um, the Starfire from John Deere or anything other that is available on the market. So there are many options for GPS connection. There will be, there are already many options now and there will be even more. All right. 
Another question coming in is in regards of uh, the EasyPlant software. Can we yep. offer EasyPlant? We've just seen the control system here, the, yep. the display. Mm -hmm. Is there an option for EasyPlant? Yes, the option with the EasyPlant control system is available. That's especially interesting for our customers um, that would like even a better connection between the data of planting and harvesting, of course. And also the opportunity, if you have a fertilizer system equipped on the machine, you can optionally vary the, the fertilizer density or the microgranular density from plot to plot. So the machine will automat automatically adjust during the alley. All right. Uh, I always ask the question, is the weight of the machine referring to this machine? Yes. What's the weight of the configuration we have here? The weight of this machine is about 960 kilograms. Um, the weight is a little bit high on that machine, of course, due to the, to the wheel frame that is adjustable in the height and, of course, of the openers. But you can also have a simple machine with 10 rows with Lemkin openers with about 750 kilograms. So that's what we can build with double disc opener. Of course, with a shoe opener, we can go even lighter. Okay. Um, referring to the weight, maybe you can give us a, a, an idea about the configuration possibilities of the machine and where are the limits? Are there limits, of course, um, but what configuration of possibilities course are, do we offer? Of course, there are limits that can be reached. So at some, at some point, it won't be possible for the operator to reach all the different um, filling systems. But as I've mentioned, there is a plot motion available, there's a row motion available. Uh, you can combine those two systems to a plot row motion. So you don't need two machines. Basically, that would be um, one machine with two seating systems on it. There are also options for the belted cone. There is a smaller one with 290 and uh, the bigger one with 290, sorry, the smaller one with 118 millimeters. Um, there are cell wheels, the OIO cell wheel with 260 millimeters diameter, 400 millimeters diameter. And there are also for the row motion system, different belted cones available, a small one with 120, the bigger one again with 180. And the row motion then can be filled, for example, with the well-known magazine system that we've used for many years, but also with some pre-distribution systems or with single funnels. Just depends on how the seats are prepared. All right, so this machine is really flexible, I yes. would say, due even to the reduction of the mechanical parts, yep. the electric drive, all the configurations. Yep. So there are basically a lot of options and configuration possibilities. Yes, there's a huge amount of, of configuration possibilities. All right, thanks, Thomas. You're welcome. Uh, we are good in time. Anyways, the next session is yours again. Yeah. So take your time to move to the next machine. Ladies and gentlemen, the next session is going to be about the Dynamic Disc Plus. It's the precision spaced planter. Again, Thomas Hippisreuter will present the machine. So let's uh, jump to the next machine beside of us and please enjoy the session. Again, I'd like to remind you, please ask your questions. We're going to go into the details afterwards or contact our sales team by email or phone. They are ready to discuss with you the details. So, hello everybody who has just joined the session. And of course, hello again to all of you who are still on the screen. Um, for, to all of you who are new, my name is Thomas Hippesreuter. I'm the head of the customer service of the business field SeedMech. And I will now introduce to you our new precision space planter, the Dynamic Disc Plus. But before we go into detail on the machine and walk around the machine a little bit, I would like to show you the product video so that you can also see the machine a little bit in a field action.
So as you can see, I'm already standing next to the machine and I would like to walk around the machine joined by you on the screen or at home in the office or wherever you are right now at the moment. Um, as I've already mentioned on the plot and row motion, we have developed a new very flexible CDOS platform that includes the frame and the control unit. So also the Dynamic Disk Plus is part of that very flexible system. Um, so we have all the same tube dimensions down here. So the main tube is always the same on all our new CDOS. Um, we have the tubes up here that build the structure of the machine that are also again always in the same dimensions. So it is very easy to hook up any additional equipment later on after you've planted the first few seasons or also on the control unit. The machine is also very flexible. So it's most of the components that we offer for the machine are just a plug and play solution. On that machine, we are standing we are standing right next to now. We have, for example, fertilizer boxes mounted. Two fertilizer boxes are mounted on the machine. Uh, one hopper has a capacity of about 70 liters. And of course, it's also electrical driven, like everything else on that machine. Um, so we have, again, a guided calibration for the fertilizer system or also for the microgranulate system that is mounted on the back of them, on the, on the back of the machine. Um, and the calibration wheel is also uh, with, a, with a calibration wizard like on the plot and row motion. An additional feature on those fertilizer boxes is that we have mounted that drawer down here. So you can just pull that out and you can either empty the hopper so that there is nothing left in the hopper or you can use that uh, for the calibration. So you have something right on the machine that collects all the fertilizer dropped out and then you can easily weigh the amount of fertilizer dropped out. Between those two fertilizer boxes, there is a very powerful blower unit um, that can either be driven with uh, the tractor hydraulics or uh, with a PTO shaft, just how you want it to drive. We have the, we have the options here on that blower unit. In that case, uh, we have the blower unit that goes up to six rows with one blower mounted inside. There is also a bigger one for up to 12 rows that includes um, two blowers then. So just to double the air that can be pushed through the system. Also on the machine, especially on the Dynamic Disk Plus, we have that second square tube here um, that takes care of the vacuum distribution and distributes the vacuum to all the, the row units that we will see in a few seconds. So let's go down to the frame and to the opener unit. What you can see here is a very heavy fertilizer opener. Um, this double disc opener is especially designed for very hard planting conditions uh, like non-till planting and this one is a Kinze product, but we also offer lighter options for the fertilizer opener, just like um, a shoe opener, um, a lighter double disc fertilizer opener, or there is also on the, the big double disc opener, there is the option to have a row unit mounted fertilizer opener. So that makes it very versatile when you are planting with an adjustable frame. Adjustable frame is what we have just here. So in that special case, you can go with six rows that are mounted on that machine from 20 to 45 centimeters. So you can plant basically everything uh, from wheat, barley to canola, um, up to sugar beets with 45 centimeters. Or you can also use that machine as a four row planter with 75 centimeters row distance for example for corn. So a very versatile planter that can plant basically anything you want as long as we are in the range of the row distances. A various, diff various amount of different frame systems is available. So we have bigger frames 
um, with, the, with the hydraulic adjustability, or we have fixed frames that are just a fixed mounted opener to, to the tube with, for example, the wheels in the front as we have it on that machine, so that you can easily adjust the row distance, but you have a very, a very rigid connection between the opener unit and the frame. But there are also uh, wheels available that go to the back, just to, to cover up a little bit the, the center of gravity, so that the center of gravity is a real bit better positioned on the wheels of the machine. Anyhow, we try to move the center of gravity of that machine as far to the front as anyhow possible. So the next thing I would like to talk about are the openers, the, the seating units. In that case, we have a small double disc opener mounted. That small double disc opener can deliver up to 160 kilograms of opener pressure with the, the spring fully tensioned. You can also turn around that spring so that it would look in that way to reduce the weight of the opener that is pushing to the ground. That would be very useful, for example, if you have very light seating conditions and you just want to move some weight away from the ground. There is also um, a shoe opener available for that machine or the, the small double disc opener, similar to what we have here, just without the side mounted depth gauge wheels. Also available would be a big and heavy double disc opener, uh, also with side mounted depth gauge wheels that can go up to 250 kilograms opener pressure with the normal spring system or even higher with the, with the pneumatic down pressure unit mounted. Mounted on our openers, we have the hard piece of the machine. This is our precision based planting unit. <coughs> the dynamic disc plus seating element. What we have here are the pneumatic connections for the flap that shuts off during the alleyway. So that is with that pneumatic cylinder here. We take care of the length of the tubes so that there can nothing go wrong when plugging in the, the element cap after exchanging, for example, the seating discs or cleaning out the seating unit. Then it's very easy to remove the element cap. And I would like to spend some time with that element cap here um, just to explain a little bit better to you in detail what is so special about that element cap. So as you can see, we try to keep it as transparent as possible so you can walk next to the machine and look what the machine is doing. We have the black flap here for dividing between the plots or shutting off the plots. And during planting, it is in that position. And so the seeds are lying right here and are picked up with our patented slotted disks and moved over here to the dropout point. When reaching the alley or before starting the planting, the flap here is um, closing the dropout channel so there can no seeds fall down too early or too late. All the seed, in case a seed drops too early, it will fall on that metal piece and go right here to the evacuation chamber. So let's say we are at the end of the plot. We open here. So all the seeds that are, were still in here will fall down to the evacuation chamber. And also all the seeds that are still on the discs will be dropped right in here into the evacuation chamber. During that evacuation, the next portions of seed is already falling in and stored right behind that flap. So if I just flip it over quickly. So in that area here, the seeds are stored before they come to the seeding discs. So this gives us the ability to achieve very short alleyways with very high precision due to those two flaps and therefore go still with a very high planting speed. For example, a six meter plot with 75 centimeters of alleyway, uh, you could go with just about four kilometers an hour or even faster. So everything is now again 
and planting position. And now I would like to tell you something about our very special seeding discs that we are using on the Dynamic Disc Plus. We are not using the conventional hole system like many others do. What we are using is a special spiral slotted disc system that requires absolutely no adjustment. So that element achieves a really high precision when planting corn. We are talking of a precision about 99 to nearly 100% in the singulation. And that without adjusting anything on the machine. So in that case, we have the corn seeding disc, the spiral slot, uh, the, the radial slotted disc. And those discs take care that the seeds always stay moving as those discs are turning. And as the seeds move to the outside, you can see the special geometry of that slot. This causes the movement of the seeds, and so the seeds push each other off the disc, and so the, the seeds get singulated. In the back, we have the spiral slotted disc. This disc is standing still all the time and defines the vacuum that reaches the seeds. So you can see the spiral slot here, and you can see up here, um, a very special point where the seeds get dropped off. And that drop off point of the seeds guarantees us that the seeds are always really precisely dropping at the same point and falling down very straight to the ground. So you can see the discs are easily exchanged. Um, this is the corn disc. Here is another example of a disc. That disc would be the disc for, the, for planting sugar beets, either pilled sugar beets or unpilled sugar beets. The disc works very good and very accurate with that hard kind of a seed. So, as I've mentioned, the seeds are always falling down from the same point. Then they are sliding down that, that seed tube so as they are always dropped at the same point and are really smooth, smoothly sliding down the, the tube, that brings us the most preci precision in the seat to, to seat distance we can achieve. That is furthermore improved with that special wheel you can see here. The wheel here is just for pressing the seed into the soil and giving the, sea, the seeds a good soil contact so they can grow in perfect conditions. Of course, there are also closing wheel options available on the machine. In that case, on that row unit, just for the, for the showing here, um, we have a two inch wide wheel to close the seed ferrule again. On the other openers, there is a wheel that is just 25 millimeters wide, so one inch. Um, the two inch wheel, of course, has five centimeters. And those take care that uh, the seed ferrule gets closed properly. What you can also see up here on the machine is the safety railing and the platform system. So for refilling the fertilizer, we have also added a platform to go to the front of the machine and refill the fertilizer system. Of course, with solid and rigid railing, on each side of the machine. This machine is also equipped with support stands, just like the plot and remotion, on the back and also on the front, so that the machine stands securely, either during the winter, when the machine is stored, or on the trailer. Another special speciality of our new uh, Dynamic Disc Plus is the machine can also be ordered as a kit. So you can mount that machine on any cedar frame you want. For example, um, if you're in South America and our European frames are just not suitable for your planting conditions, you can order that machine as a kit. You will only get the seeding elements and all the technological parts like the, the blower unit, the control unit system, and you can mount that on any frame you want. On the back of the machine, we have two solid ladders. 
so you can easily get up to the operator platform. And also on that machine mounted is the microgranulate system with a window, so you can see how much there is still left in the microgranulate box. It stays open, it won't fall down by itself. Press a small lever and you can push it down again. Um, what else to say about the microgranulate? Of course, there is also again the guided calibration and via the EasyPlant software, the option is available to put in the varying um, amount of microgranulate or fertilizer through plot to plot, so the, basically the fertilizer density can be changed from plot to plot. Um, we have also taken care of the operators. On the top of the machine, we have mounted very comfortable operator seats again. We have tried to move everything as close to the operator as possible and so that everything can be reached easily from the operator seat. So that's all I would have to say about the dynamic disk. Thank you for your attention and I would like to hand over back to Christopher and see if you have a few questions to me. Thank you, Thomas. So it's time for questions again. And one question would be, um, the machine is the Dynamic Disk Plus. Yes. Uh, some people may know the old, so to say, the old, the former the old. generation. Can yeah. you sum up the main three highlights of the machine? One of it, I guess, is the multi-crop functionality. Yes, that's, in my opinion, the biggest highlight uh, and difference. We put a lot of effort into the new element design with the two flaps. As those of you who know the old, fla the old flap system with just one flap and a scraper on it, the scraper tended to destroy seeds, um, especially in sunflower or smaller seeds. It was not a, not a problem uh, as far as I know in corn or in soybeans, but especially small seeds that get damaged uh, very easily had some problems with that scraper and we removed that and therefore we added that additional flap to also achieve the multi-crop functionality and a more a higher precision uh, in regards of plot beginning and plot ending. It was always a little bit of a discussion with the old dynamic disk. Sometimes we have plus minus one seed at the beginning and at the end due to that scraper. So we got rid of it and entered the flap that guarantees a very precise, so we are not talking about one corn early or later. This is just on the point, the first seed. So that might probably be the biggest, the biggest change on that. Um, what we also did is we reduced the costs for the machine drastically and we give that advantage to our customers. So the new Dynamic Disk Plus is even cheaper than the older Dynamic Disk but therefore it's a much better machine. And um, the, third, the third biggest change, in my opinion, is the blower unit. So the old blower unit had that standalone system with an hydraulic tank and a PTO pump that was very heavy, very expensive, and price-wise was a big disadvantage. We still offer that option for our kids but for the normal um, three-point or pull-type seeders, that is not needed anymore. So that, in my opinion, are the three main differences. All right, thank you, Thomas. In regards of GPS connection, can you sum up again, also for the Dynamic Disk Plus, what are the options? Uh, and again, is there a plug-and-play solution yeah. from Wintersteiger? So the options in regards of GPS are the, the distance-based pulse, just like the Trimble system can put out every, for example, six meters, uh, or the new Topcon system is capable of putting that signal out. Um, we can also use an area-based pulse to start the trigger at a GIS program point so that the first seed lies on a defined spot on our beautiful planet. And yes, there will be a Wintersteiger plug-and-play solution. We are working on that with one of our partners and this will give us the possibility to hook up to any GPS system our customers are using at the moment and 
well, some kind of GPS option that we are currently working on is a remote control interface, as some of our bigger customers have their own uh, field planning systems. We are offering a solution for that, so you can run your field plan software, and with that field plan software, you can also control the Dynamic Disk Plus uh, with a few, of course, with a few adjustments to your software and with a few adjustments to our software. So therefore, a little bit of change, a little bit of exchanging data is necessary. But I think that's especially interesting for our bigger customers, and we are already working with some of them on on such such solutions. All right. Thomas, thanks again for your presentations. You're welcome. And we go ahead. I think we're good in time. And the next session is about the Dell Air drones uh, compiled with the Altea software platform. So it's all about automatic phenotyping. Our colleague, a special guest from Spain, who was able to come to read to Austria today, uh, will give us an overview about the software, the benefits, and even, so to say, the data management process behind this solution and hopefully you are going to enjoy the next session. Thank you, Christopher. Um, hello and welcome again to all attendees, particularly welcome to the new people who just uh, joined. My name is Loic Pavard. I am the Intersteiger sales partner for the Iberian Peninsula and I am also a former employee of Altea, a French company dedicated to aerial image processing which is also Wintersteiger's selected partner for field experiment aerial monitoring activities. I'll be your host for the next 20 minutes and we'll be talking about digital transition of field research. And I'd like to start with a simple question. Uh, how familiar does this situation look like to each of you? And the answer is, is probably pretty, pretty clear. We are all getting used to this situation. In 2020, we all have experimented a new way of interacting with other people. Teammates, family, friends, it affects personal and business relations. The following brands on your screen are just a few names of software solutions that enable remote interactions. And today is no exception as you are all attending this event remotely. So there's no doubt that remote has become a daily word for all of us, without exception. And so this leads to the following question. Why would field experiments stay behind of this trend when so many business areas are adapting their process and smoothly adopting remote interaction solutions? Well, it happens that Wintersteiger had already taken a step forward somehow early 2020 by choosing to introduce a remote sensing technology to its catalogue of products and services. This is done in collaboration with a French company named Altea, who specializes in UAV image processing. Wintersteiger has trained internal resources during 2020 and is currently promoting UAV usage and field experiment monitoring thanks to Altea aerial image processing platform. And what's the purpose of it? Well, their partnership vision is to implement and standardize field experiment surveying from A to Z. So this is the outline of the agenda that we'll be following uh, for the next minutes. We'll talk about phenotyping challenges and market trends. I'll cover the features of this technology, the unique selling proposition. We'll discuss about classical process overview when dealing with aerial data. I'll cover the different agronomic parameters um, that can be calculated with this technology and the benefits versus traditional or conventional manual rating. And we'll have and we'll end up with a short uh, demo and a sum up. Let's start discussing about phenotyping challenges. It's all about accelerating product go to market. So we've listed here a few pain points for researchers. Implement flexible, affordable, and productive approaches to measure crops. Deal with data management and data integration. Be able to select and extract KPIs or key metrics for each kind of protocol. Standardize measurements 
tools, and processes. Until now, most of the existing solutions available to address these challenges are still not homogeneously spread out, or when implemented in one station or one location, not easily replicable to other sites. From 2021 and onwards, Wintersteiger now offers a secured and broadly accessible platform to bring an answer to researchers. Talking about market trend considerations, well, it seems that aerial phenotyping is finally reaching its momentum. After a few years of value analysis, market is now tending to recognize aerial phenotyping as a significant improvement compared to conventional rating. Most larger players of this industry have already started deploying solutions. End users may still be facing difficulties and that's where turnkey solution with a seamless workflow and a high level of industrialization are key to success. There is still a strong need to educate on best practices, especially on flight plans and flight configurations, so that expected metrics can be accurately generated. And even if key players of this industry will generally lead such kind of decisions from their headquarters, usually global agreement do not prevent local purchase strategies. UAVs, or unmanned aerial vehicles, and imagery tools are digital twin builders, meaning that they are used to survey and build the digital twin of an experimental field made of hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands of microplots. And what's the unique selling proposition here? Well, enable an op automated, integrated, replicable phenotyping workflow that can be implemented identically in different locations and can integrate with existing tools or methods. So very briefly, this would be the high-level workflow overview when dealing with aerial data. It's made of three steps. The first one is called capture and is the action of image collection. It refers to the flight, to, to, to the drone flights themselves. The second step would be manage this information. So this refers to aggregating, centralizing the data sets and format the information so that it can be further worked. And the third step, important one, is the analysis. And this refers to the data metrics and analytical extraction which can be done on the um, managed information from the previous step. Now let's zoom in a little bit and apply this previous workflow to field experiment. An appropriate workflow to field research needs to cover the following step. First would be plot data flow planning, which is the planning of required flight activities based on a given research protocol. Then comes the field drone or field plan drawing. This is not a new step, but nowadays it can be digitally designed and further used within reality modeling solutions. Data capture would be the following step, and this corresponds to a series of flights that need to be conducted all along the season. Photogrammetry is the science or technology aiming at building a digital asset using multiple photos of the original real-world object, in this case, an experimental field. Then comes what is here called plot extraction, and this is the step aiming at defining microplot boundaries, and this needs to be extremely accurate if we want to extract accurate metrics afterwards. We would then have the model run, which is the critical step of running algorithm, or health index calculations on the previously drawn microplots. And we would end up with the last step dedicated to exports and reports, which would enable researchers to integrate aerial phenotyping metrics with existing IT ecosystem or existing methods. So Altea is a cloud-based platform that enable managing, processing, viewing, analyzing and collaborating with aerial data. And it will enable you to get accurate trait measurements at the right time. 
Altea platform offers two methods to plot an existing field experimental scheme on the resulting image layers coming from the photogrammetric step. There's the old fashioned way. Simply um, upload the experimental scheme as an Excel file on the platform and you will require its conversion into a precise vector file within your project. But you can also do it the autonomous way. If you already have an existing georeferenced vector file for your experimental design, you can upload this vector file on the platform, apply specific patterns to match your research protocol, link it to your own database, and you will be able to edit this vector file onto the platform, rotating, transferring, shifting, so that you get your precise experimental field digital twin ready in question of minutes within Altea platform. Let's talk a bit about the agronomical parameters or morphological parameters that can be generated with this technology. First, and the, the most classical one, are called scouting maps um, or health indices. Uh, the NDVI is an example of them. Uh, this one is related to the plant Vigor. There are a series of them that can be generated when using a multispectral camera. But on top of this, of course, uh, we can apply and generate different traits dedicated to field research. The microplot field vectorization is the first one. We just talked about it before. And you will get a digitalization and georeference microplot boundaries after this step. This would be the first initial step to trigger all their calculation afterwards. Then we can calculate and measure rows within your different microplots. You will detect, obtain, obtain a digitalization of them and even the length of those rows within your different microplots. It can serve for guidance uh, from agri agri agronomic machines or it's a basic requirement to count plants or detect gaps within microplots. It is also possible to assess plant height with this technology. We can detect and count plants and gaps within the whole experimental field, which can serve, for example, to discard some of your microplots that may no, not have reached a minimum threshold that you want to set. It is possible to characterize the flowering, which estimates the flowering percentage for row crops. It works for canola and sunflower. It is possible to estimate the emergence, which is the percentage of green at early stage of crops and characterize seedling vigor. We can also characterize a parameter which is called stay green and measure the crop ability to stay as green as possible during late growing season. And finally, the last one, it's called fraction cover and measure the spatial extent of the vegetation on a given microplot. What benefits versus traditional rating? Well, first, you, would, you will get digital twins of your microplots, from which you will be able to extract key traits. You will be able to industrialize notations with liability and traceability. You will be able to screen more and faster. You can implement more or bigger microplots. You can do more observations in your field trial or even add other factors. You will be able to screen accurately, decreasing human error with reliable and repeatable measurements. And last but not least, you can see behind the visible because usually this is done with sensors that are called multispectral sensors and those particular cameras can see above or behind what the human eye can see, particularly within two different bands of the spectrum light, the near infrared and the red edge band where plants usually reflect a lot of the solar sunlight that reach them. So let me uh, introduce you to a very short um, demo of Altea platform. So this is the login dashboard. It is accessible from the URL that you can see uh, on the top of the screen with a simple username and a password you will access to the platform by itself by an unlimited number of accounts within your corporation. Once you get into the tool, you will find on the left column a series of projects which corresponds to different locations where drone flights have been operated. 
on the right part of the screen their locations. Now, going into a project is as simple as clicking on it, and what you get into a project, you will then obtain a series of layers which reference or corresponds to different images. We are now watching what is called the aerial view or bird view of your experimental field. Displaying a layer is as simple as just enabling it or displaying it um, with the checkbox that are in front of them. You will be able to display different kind of scouting maps. We talked before of the NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which refers to the vigor of the plants. The NDRE, which we are now looking at, which stands for Normalized Difference Red Edge and usually correlates pretty well with the chlorophyll content. This kind of usage of the platform is, let's say, a GIS usage. So in this case, you would be using Altea platform to have a look at your experimental field as a whole. This can be helpful to confirm pre-identified behaviors from the field or maybe help you detecting unexpected areas or even discard areas from your protocol based on imagery analysis. As you can see on the screen, you can also design polygons easily. You will be able to share those polygons with other users of the account. When I say polygons, I'm referring to annotations, for example, to um, specify a particular area you want to highlight. You can use measurement tools. Um, there are plenty of uh, tools that can be used within this GIS approach of Altea platform. But you may also want to use this platform with another approach, which is more statistical or data analytical approach. In this case, you may be interested to access the download section from where you will be able to access to a series of information in a tabulated formatted file. So here you will be able to access, download a CSV file. And within this CSV file that I will now show you, each line corresponds to a particular microplot. We are now looking at the NDVI data of a given project, and data are presented in columns where you will find the maximum value, the minimum value, the average value, the standard deviation, the variance, so all kinds of statistical calculations for each and unique microplot of your experimental field. So based on this kind of file, of course, it's quite easy to build a pivot table chart or even um, a, a pivot analysis, pivot table analysis. And this is what I'm uh, showing you right now for a plant count example. So what we are looking at on the screen right now is the average plant count per block ID within a given project. So let's say I'm interested in identifying where are located the microplots with a very low level of stand counts or plant counts. So with a simple analysis like this and based on my CSV file, I can just identify that I have a high level of microplots with a low stand count plant within the three first block IDs that are here referenced, 19507, 19508, and 19509. So this would be a second usage of Altea platform in a much more data analytical or statistical approach. And of course, these data can be correlated with your own database. So to sum up, Altea and Wintersteiger partnership will allow to create an automated, integrated, replicable phenotyping workflow that can be implemented identically in different locations and integrate with your existing tools or methods. It's also a way to smoothly transition from conventional experiment monitoring to digital surveying with low investment and high flexibility at scaling implementation. All in all, aerial phenotyping enables researchers to precisely manage and measure their trials, understand objectively crop behaviors, make quicker and more efficient decisions, thus decrease time to markets for new variety market launch, for example. I hope this presentation gave you a few perspectives of current and future possibilities offered by a field research digital transition supported by drone image processing. 
Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Loic, for the presentation. You're welcome. Um, collecting questions, we're getting, getting a lot of it. So let's try to answer at least some of them. Uh, one of it would be um, existing drones from third party suppliers, which customers already have, let's say a copter drone. Can this be used to import the data, the pictures? into the Altea platform? Absolutely. Yeah, the short answer is that Altea platform is drone agnostic. Um, so it means you can definitely upload on the platform different data sets coming from a lot of different drones. The key question here is that the compatibility is not that much about the drone compatibility, but the sensor compatibility. And in this sense, so the sensor I'm referring to the, to, to the photographic camera that is embedded onto the drone. Um, Vintage Tiger teams have for you available a building list, a list of compliant uh, drone third-party sensors that you can refer to in case you already have your equipment. In case you plan to, b to purchase an equipment, I would definitely recommend to have a look at this list before you purchase your equipment. This leads me to the second question, which is uh, the question, what is the benefit of the Dela drone versus a copter drone? Maybe just a brief yeah. idea that our participants can uh, differentiate between the, the two technologies, basically, in the hardware. Right. So, yeah, there are two types of drone quadcopters, uh, which are also very well known in the um, business to customer, um, let's say, um, uh, area. Um, the drone that the drone in Dela, which you can see here, actually, is a long distance drone. It's been really thought in terms of efficiency, uh, but not only it can fly long time and uh, cover long surfaces. It is also very quick at uh, starting and launching. Um, uh, most people that have been trying drones, they have been experimenting somehow that the calibration of the sensor by itself, um, the preparation you have to do before you can effectively fly the drone can take time. And this drone have been really, or has been really thought for efficiency to maximize the time of covering and flying above your, fly, your experimental fields and spend the minimum time in preparation. So this means the whole setup, uh, the height, the starting phase. The whole setup the, the and even also... Even the batteries, I think, is, is very dedicated for this kind of, of applications, right? And also finishing the, the whole process, actually, that we covered in this presentation has been really thought in that way because Altea uh, covers actually both manufacturing drones and the data platform afterwards. So they have really think about the whole process. All right. Okay, another question is what training does the customer need for starting up with the Altea platform, with the drone? Just a rough idea, how, how much effort it is. Is it easy? Is it yeah. what is necessary? So there are two cases. Either you already have someone on board or have access to someone that knows how to fly a drone. In this case, it's going to be pretty quick. It's essentially about teaching him the best practices applied to field research, um, how to fly a drone in field research context. Uh, to, to make sure that the extractable metrics afterwards are correct. In case you don't have access to anyone uh, who can fly a drone right now, you have two options. Either you opt in to train yourself or um, train someone of your team. In this case, you will require essentially two things, a theoretical or professional license, which is nothing more complex than having your uh, theoretical driving license. It's a question of a few weeks of involvement and a key question uh, certificate. And then you will need a bit of practice to fly drones in this particular context. Once again, this is not complex. It's, uh, it can be done within a few weeks. And dealing with the platform by itself, because it is completely web-based and exhaustively documented, is very accessible also and only a question of practices on your very first projects. All right. So all in all, it's not a big deal, neither a long, long-term uh, involvement. Even online trainings in times like this, uh, obviously you know, webinar is not easy, is available. but the software can be trained anywhere, anytime. Absolutely, yeah. Loic, thanks again for coming. It's a pleasure to have you here. You're welcome. And I'm handing over to our next session, ladies and gentlemen. Again, a reminder, we have a lot of questions and this is amazing. So please keep uh, asking a lot of questions. But anyways, if you want to have an immediate question, please contact our sales team. They are available. And I'm handing over to our big machine, the double plot combine from Wintersteiger, the new Split NH. My colleague Christopher Schönauer will give you an overview about the new machine. 
Yeah, thanks a lot, Christopher, and That's welcome back sweet. here in the exhibition hall here in Ried in Austria. Very, a very warm welcome also from my side to the Wintersteiger live demonstration today here in 2021. My name is Christopher Schönauer and I am the product manager of Combines at Wintersteiger. In the next minutes, I am allowed to present you the new double blood combine of Wintersteiger, the split in age. At the beginning of my presentation, I want to start with the product video of the new combine. Here you can see the combine performance in the field. Have fun! Welcome back. As you can see in the video, the combine, the basic combine, is from New Holland, a professional partner with service stations all over the world. To be more precise, the basic combine is the TC 4.90 from New Holland, a robust four shaker machine with a tangential thrashing drum. Now let's talk more about the combine itself. The combine has a powerful FPT engine integrated with 175 horsepower. All emission standards are available, which are requested worldwide. That means a stage 5 engine, of course, with EPA certification for the North American market, as well as a 3A engine, are available on the new combine split and age. The fuel tank capacity of the new combine is 300 liter, more than enough for a long harvesting day. The grain tank volume of the new combine is 5,000 liters, and the emptying speed is with around one minute very fast, and is of course a big portion of the daily performance of the machine. The driving speed of the new split and age is 30 kilometers per hour. 
The, the machine has this 9 meter turning radius, best maneuverability. The outside width of the, combi of the combine at the tires can either be 275 centimeters or 295 centimeters. Your choose. In addition to the usual Wintersteiger service, we signed a, a global service agreement with New Holland. So it is possible to get original New Holland spare parts all over the world for the combine at your New Holland dealer. Now let's talk more about the double blot combine itself. Let's talk about the header. Let's start in the front. As you can see here, Geringhof will stay our main supplier for corn headers for the split and age. Geringhof is a reliable partner for Wintersteiger since years with very high quality products. The headers are produced especially for Wintersteiger with the middle separation in Germany. All different versions of the, two corn, of the four row corn headers are available, foldable or fixed, all different row spacings and of course all different chopper op options like the MS, the rotor disc or also the MS Horizon. Now let's talk about the middle separation. The combine split and age has a very accurate middle separation from the cutting table till the end of the shaker and the sieve. Every header is adjusted on the combine during the assembling of the split and age. So we can avoid losses at the interface of the combine and the header. Also the threshing drum and the concave are separated. With all that measures, we achieve a very low mixing of less than 15 grams from the right side to the left side. The next highlight of the machine I want to talk to you is the modern, per modern cabin with perfect ergonomics. The multifunctional lever is integrated in the armrest, as you can see. You also see the eight camera system, which is shown on two screens. The position of the cameras are freely selectable. At a glance, you have the whole machine under control. All harvest data will be stored on a Panasonic toughpad, which you can either run with the Easy Harvest or Myro software. Additionally, there are many options from New Holland available, like the electronic air condition control, the Bluetooth connection for the mobile phone, the cooling box, and many more for your modern cabin. Summing up, the cabin gives you best ergonomics for a stress-free working, working day for the driver, sample taker, or operator. Now, let's talk about the grain logistics system of the new split and age. Through an integrated belt stop, belt stop system and a powerful pneumatic grain delivery system with radar sensors, we can achieve a cycle time of about 17 seconds. The combine is equipped with the high performance weighing system from Harvestmaster, the H2 Twin. The volume of the H2 Twin is 40 liters for precise weighing, moisture and test rate result, results. The integrated sensors in the weighing system for slope and motion compensation, giving precise harvesting data. As the data is one of the most important information for you and for the breeder, the weighing system is equipped with a special mechanism, mechanism for continuous control of the system. The grain transport of the combine through these air tubes is very smooth and the patented airfoil separator are also integrated in this combine. A sample taking system where the sample size can be adjusted in the cabin very easy by, very easy by the driver also and also an NRR system is available as an option on the split and age. Additionally, the weighing system is very easy to clean. You only have to open the locks on the left and on the right side to slide out the weighing system for cleaning and maintenance. 
This, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you now. You have to open the locks on the left side and on the right side, as I said. After then, you can put down this. Then you open the lock of the weighing system on the left side and also on the right side. And now, that's it. You can slide out your weighing system for cleaning and maintenance. You see, it's very easy to clean and to work on the weighing system of this combine. Another highlight of the split and age grain logistics system is the integrated traffic-like system in the cabin for the driver. At the previous version of the split combine, the driver had to, to rely on the camera to figure out when the combine is ready to go into the next plot. You, the integration of radar sensors on the split and age, a look to the traffic light system by the driver is enough to know when the combine is ready to go to the next plot. Is the traffic light green, you can go to the next plot. This isn't only relieving the driver, further than that, it's giving you also a more constant result of your data. Another highlight of the combine is the integrated flap system in the grain delivery system. The original grain transport to the grain tank is still in place. You can therefore harvest border plots in full performance to the grain tank. For the research plot mode, you only need to switch both flaps from inside the cabin to the pneumatic transport system and then seeds are delivered directly to the weighing system. The benefit is that you can also guide only two rows to the weighing system and the other two rows to the grain tank. That saves a lot of cycle time at four row plots, where you only take the weight of two rows. So to say, you can do a very easy center plot harvesting. Last but not least, I want to tell you something about this ladder. For maintenance on the engine and grain tank, you can use this ladder to go upstairs on the combine. This ladder you also can use for refueling the split and age double blot combine. From up there, you have the best overview and entrance to all parts of the engine and the grain tank. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of my presentation. Thanks a lot for your attention. I hope I could give you a short overview about the new double blot combine from Wintersteiger, the new split and age. Now it's time for your questions. Back to you, Christopher. Thanks for the presentation. As you're joining me, I'm looking for the questions. Of course, the splitted machine, it's all about cycle time. So maybe you can tell us uh, what did we measure, what did we reach in regards of cycle time, under which conditions? Yeah, we did a lot of testing of the machine during the development, of course. And also we measured the cycle time. The cycle time of this combine is about 17 seconds um, for a double plot. Um, of course, without sample taking and without NRR measurement. With NRR measurement and with sample taking, we will reach a cycle time of about 27 seconds. Okay. One visitor is uh, asking for options. I think you already mentioned some in the cabin, uh, air conditioning and so on. So is it correct that the whole range for the TC uh, model is available also for our machine? Yes, that's correct. Um, all available options from New Holland, of course, are available on the split and age. That means, for example, a straw chopper, a differential lock, some uh, automatic cooling systems and so on are available like they are also available at New Holland for the TC 4.90. Okay. Another question is the crops. Uh, this machine is specially made, of course, for the header for, for corn. Um, do we have an option for other crops? and 
of course, the question, which crops? Yeah. At this moment, uh, we are working on a multi-crop split and age. That means that we are now developing the combine for uh, wheat, barley, and canola, and of course, also for soya bean. So we are planning to make tests in summer, in Austrian summer 2021, and we will it have we will, we will it have it we will have it ready in uh, 2022 to uh, the market um, a multi crop combine with the split and age. Sounds good. I think there's time still for one question. It's about the header. Um, do we, for example, offer a sunflower header for the splitted combine? We can offer a sunflower header. Um, all customer specific solutions are welcome at Wintersteiger. Please only contact your area sales manager, your contact person from Wintersteiger. We are happy about your information and we will work out the concept especially for your use and then we will find a solution for you. All right. Thanks, Christopher. We will have you You're for welcome. the last presentation later. Thank you. And we go ahead. I think we're good in time. Uh, with the next presentation. It's all about the breeding software Easy Breed. My colleague Svenja Deal will give you an overview about the data management tool which we are offering. And I hope you're going to get an insight in regards of modern data management. Yeah, good morning to the one side of the world. Good evening to the other side of the world. Uh, my name is Svenja Deal, and I would like to present you Easy Breed, the flexible software solution for plant breeding and field testing. Uh, I mean, you all know Wintersteiger as a reliable partner in field research equipment, and we all know that modern plant breeding generates more and more data, very precise data and very valuable data. data you need to make your decisions in plant breeding. And thus is the reason why we have developed Easy Breed, to give you the opportunity to manage your data in a very effective way. And today I would like to present Easy Breed to introduce you to the software. And we start with our Easy Breed product video. So enjoy and I see you in some minutes. We all have big demands. A healthy diet, quality of life, and a climate neutral energy supply. Plant breeding comes at the beginning of all of this. Only the best varieties and the highest quantity seeds will meet the challenges of the future. Finding the best has always been the art of plant breeding. And that becomes much easier with Easy Breed. I've been working in research and development in the field of plant breeding for over two decades. One of the biggest challenges that arises every day is processing the vast amounts of data and recognizing what information is actually relevant within these huge data volumes. This is almost impossible without the help of suitable software. Some computer-aided standalone solutions exist on the market which cover specific aspects of breeding, but there is nothing out there that covers the complete breeding process. That's why we have developed Easy Breed, a software that has been developed not only for but with plant breeders to meet the requirements of professional users. Planning field trials is quick and easy. With just a few clicks, a new trial design is created over one or more locations and imported into the database. Errors in the allocation of beds and rows or in naming are therefore avoided. Cedar compatible sowing lists are called up directly from Easy Breed and sowing data are automatically imported again. Ratings, either manually with mobile devices or with drones, is very simple with Easy Breed and the recorded data are checked for validity immediately. EasyBreed also acts as an interface to the laboratory, 
laboratory orders can be prepared in EasyBreed and the laboratory results can be made directly available. For us, in plant breeding, error-free generation and recording of data is the top commodity. It forms the basis for decisions for everything else in our company. And it was in this area that we wanted to further develop. We joined forces with other breeders and with the developers of EasyBreed and discovered a new solution, customized for us. This now enables us to view and evaluate our results in unprecedented quantity and at speeds never seen before, and to hopefully make the right decisions for the future on this basis. Yield data are essential for successful breeding. Harvesters record harvest data, which are then directly available for further evaluation in EasyBreed. With only a few mouse clicks, EasyBreed instantly displays the consolidated trial results. Decisions can be made on this basis for the coming breeding season, for new crosses, and even for variety registration. Data losses and incorrect decisions due to inadequate data management are ultimately costly. Here, EasyBreed saves a great deal of time and above all money. Through constant further development, especially in cooperation with our user community, we can guarantee one thing, the continuous adaptation of the software to new and above all individual requirements and at a fair price. Easy breed. Simple, flexible, versatile. For all types of crops. Simply more successful breeding with Easy Breed. Yeah, hello, back again. I hope you liked the video. So, yeah, I would like to give you some more information on EasyBreed. And looking at the slide here, we have separated the whole breeding process into different steps. And all the steps are supported by EasyBreed. And in the next couple of slides, I would like to show you some information how the different steps are supported by our software. So let's start with the crosses part. That means you create new varieties and you have to make a decision which crossbreeding partners you take and put together to make your new varieties. And EasyBreed has this crosses manager and in this crosses manager it's possible to consolidate data from different experiments and you can also add pedigree information or genotypic information to the crosses manager. And based on this information, you can select the best crossbreeding partners. So it's just a few mouse clicks and then you have new crosses created with easy breed. And that's also the same for offsprings. And crosses and offsprings are generated with standard names in the software. The newly created crosses and offsprings are integrated with the whole pedigree. So we have the whole pedigrees available over X generations. So once you've generated your varieties, I think you wish to test your varieties. And so the next step is to design your experiments. We have a number of different functionalities available to create experiments, to make randomized designs, to make unrandomized designs, and to make very special designs. Here you show our dialogue for creating randomized field designs. Uh, again, it's just a few mouse clicks. You select your uh, design of your choice, for example, augmented, alpha, RCBD, or strip plot design, and then you can uh, click here which parameters, how many replicates you want to use, and so on and so forth. And with a few mouse clicks, you end up with your randomized design, which can be then directly imported in the database. And there, it's available for the next step. So the next step is to create your physical maps, so maps with x, y coordinates. And that's also possible with easy breed. And once the maps are created, 
and uh, the field designs are created, you can map your field designs on your field map and then everything is available to start your sawing, for example. We've also planned to integrate EasyBreed with the GIS system because I think GIS is the future. So uh, that would be available in, yeah, in a couple of months, I think. So let's look at the next step. Once you have designed your experiment and you have everything available in the database, uh, you want to perform your experiment, of course. And this is also supported by the software. We have, for example, an interface to sawing machines available. Uh, you have also already learned about EasyPlant, for example. We have an interface to EasyPlant, but also to other sawing devices. And you can manage, for example, your sawing parameters in EasyBreed, so the plot size, for, for example, or everything which is needed by your sawing machine. And then you can generate export list for your sawing machines. And of course, it's possible vice versa to import the actual sawing data back to EasyBreed. And there, the data is available, for example, to control the quality of sawing, like shown here uh, with a heat map. Yeah, performing experiments means also to collect data, to collect a lot of data. And on the one side, you collect it in a manual way. And for this reason, you, know, you need field books. And EasyBreed gives you the option to generate in a very flexible way field books. That means you decide which traits should be documented. And you also decide which Additional information should be visualized on the field book. Again, for example, pedigree information or marker information. The field books, like sh shown here, uh, can be exported as a CSV file, and then they are compatible with most of the handheld devices available on the market. And they are also compatible with the rating app field book, for example, which is, which is quite versatile, it's shown here. And once the data is recorded, it can be re-imported back to EasyBreed, and there it's available then for uh, the next step. In planning is an interface to a, race system, uh, to a rating system with voice recognition. I think that can be very interesting for some of you to just to put your laptop in your backpack and then talk to the system and uh, yeah, take your, your notes uh, based on speech recognition. I think that's quite comfortable. Yeah, by the way, it's also possible to generate lab lists, for example, to provide a, a list to service provider, which can then integrate uh, the data into this list. And then, again, the re-importing of data is quite comfortable. Yeah, that brings me to the next step, data integration. I think data integration is a very, very important part. Uh, it's time consuming to do it by hand, to do it in a manual way. And if you don't do the data integration part, then you lose information. So then you only look at a subset, subset of data, and then you, the decision is only based on a subset of data, and maybe the quality of, of decisions is not that good. And for this reason, we offer with EasyBreed also a data integration hub. So data from Cedars, I've just talked about that, but also data from harvesters, data from your note-taking apps, and in the future, also data from weather stations or soil data could be integrated into EasyBreed, and then it's really integrated. That means if you have plot-based data from harvesters and seeders, you can look at the data uh, at once, so you can compare data with each other, um, also for drone data that also could be integrated in the software and you compare, can compare your drone's data with your manually, um, manually um, taken data. Yeah, let's look at the results part. So of course you want to analyze your data 
And analyzing data, I think that's quite easy if all the data is consolidated and available from one place. And that's indeed uh, the thing in EasyBreed. So you have everything in one place, so you can start your analysis. And we offer you a number of different analysis and visualization options with EasyBreed. Here I've shown you some examples for data visualization. You can use, for, the, for example, visualizations for quality control of your data. Here, for example, to check the quality of harvest data. Uh, you can detect trends with visualization, like shown here with box plots. So yield data separated by different locations. You see also trends and dependencies of different parameters. And what's quite important is that it's possible to add your own data visualization scripts, if you have scripts available in R, for example, or if you wish to have additional visualization tools or options available in EasyBreed, it takes us maybe some hours to integrate that in the software. So here is an example for analysis. EasyBreed has a function available to automatically calculate outliers, and once they are calculated, it's possible to cr discriminate the outliers for subsequent analysis. A core analysis part is the evaluation of complete trials over one site or also over multiple sites, and then adjusted mean values are determined and the adjusted means can then be directly imported into the database. And uh, the function also generates a statistical overview so that you get a quite good overview on the quality of your trial. Yeah, I've, once, I've, I've already pointed out that data consolidation is an important part. And I think you not only want to look at data from one year, but you want to bring data together from one more, three or four years, whatever. And that's easily possible with easy breeds. So if you can define which traits you want, which traits you want to look at, you select your experiments of choice. And what I've shown here in that slide is a consolidation of data over four different years. And you can also integrate marker information and also information in pedigrees or mother and father, for example. Yeah, let's come to the last step. You want to select, of course, the best varieties. And with EasyBreed, we try to help you, we try to support you. And uh, this is the reason why we offer different uh, search functionalities, and with search functionalities you can find your best varieties. We have some pre-configured search queries, we have full text search queries, and we have also a tool where with this tool it's possible to define your very specific search queries, for example, to, to find varieties with trade X and value Y and so on and so forth. Uh, this queries can be reused and are available for the next years. And yeah, finally, you can generate lists with EasyBreed with all the data you want to look at. And then you can select the best varieties in an iterative way by sorting and by filtering and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's it. That's the short round trip through the breeding process with EasyBreed. And keep in mind, with EasyBreed, it's quite easy to manage breeding and experimental data quite efficiently and sustainably. And with that, I thanks for your attention. I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Svenja, for the presentation. Welcome. In the meanwhile, I collected some questions, and the first one would be, how long does it take to convert a current system, a current breeding software, to port it and move it, the data into the EasyBreed mm -hmm. software, what is necessary doing so? Okay. 
Yeah, the first step is, of course, the installation of EasyBreed. The installation procedure is quite straightforward. I think in less than one day, you have EasyBreed up and running, and you can work with the system. So then we need a data migration strategy, and that depends, of course, of the quantity of data, so how many data you want to re-import into the system, and also on the diversity of data. So if you have already a database in use and everything is one place, then it takes maybe some hours or some days. And you have, if you have diverse data, then it might take longer. Anyway, I think in a couple of hours, we have at least some data, some basic data imported in the system that you can start to use the system. And yeah, for a proper usage of the system, you need some training, of course. And we have good, we have made good experiences with webinars these days, of course. And we recommend one to two hour webinars. And I think it needs us about 10 webinars to get you introduced to the system. So it's quite straightforward. All right. So even in times like this, it doesn't stop us in the software we can do. Yeah. That. Any kind of training, any kind yeah, of Yeah, I made very good experience indeed with, with webinars, because if you have a whole training day, that's quite hard to follow all the different things. So it's good to have a two hours webinar and then have a break and then go next day or two days uh, later back to the software. So it gives you always the option to try with, with the software. Good. Uh, another question which is coming in is, do we have a special package for universities and academies? Yeah, indeed, we have a special package. We have special offers for, for universities. And we are also quite open to cooperate with, with universities, maybe to, to integrate some analysis parts developed by universities into the EasyBreed software and make it available for commercial partners and so on and so forth. Uh, I think, yeah, it could be quite interesting to cooperate. And please contact me and, yeah, I can send also an offer to universities, of course. Okay. My last question would be, are there any substantial differences? What is the benefit of EasyBreed? Can you just wrap up for us? What is the difference? I mean, there are commercial breeding software solutions already. We're not the first ones, but mm -hmm. what is the main benefit of EasyBreed? Yeah, I mean, um, EasyBreed is a quite flexible software, so you um, have the possibility to configure the system that you find your, your special requirements integrated in the system. We can integrate also uh, proprietary analysis workflows in the software to make everything available what you need. And it's quite easy to install the system. Maybe that's a little bit different with other systems. And I think we focus, focus on the data integration part. And I think the data integration part becomes more and more important with the increasing number of data. I've already pointed it out. And because we are so flexible, uh, I think uh, we are very well prepared for the future. And that's a benefit uh, for EasyBreed, maybe with respect to other, other software. All right. We're running out of time anyway, so okay. I could ask you yeah. a lot of more questions as it looks like. We're yeah, getting feel a lot. free to contact me, of course, um, for I think a live demo. Easy Breed fits into the easy world of Wintersteiger anyways, <laughs> and this yeah. is also the reason why we believe uh, data management is part of the future, of course. Mm -hmm. And again, please feel free to ask us. Thank you, Svenja, for the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Christopher. And we're going ahead with the last presentation, last but not least, the Quantum Pro. Um, handing over to my colleague Christopher Schönauer and hopefully you're going to enjoy our last session. Yeah, thanks Christopher and welcome back to the exhibition hall. Yeah, second time, a very warm welcome also from my side um, to the Wintersteiger live stream event 2021. My name is, as I told you, Christopher Schönauer and I am the product manager of Combines at Wintersteiger. I'm very happy to show you, dear viewer, now the new plot combine Quantum Pro. At the beginning of my presentation, I want to start with the product video of the new plot combine. Here you can see the Quantum Pro performing in the field. Have fun!
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you could see in the video, the Quantum Pro is, so to say, the big and strong brother of the proven Quantum Combine. The machine is placed in the upper performance level to fulfill the highest requirements in modern field research. Summarized, the Quantum Pro sets standards in header width, stability because of the big tires, unique optifloss rushing system, the grain tank volume, the modernity especially of the cabin, and the engine power. These subjects I want to explain to you now more in detail. Let's start at the front. Let's talk about the header. The Quantum Pro can be equipped, as you can see here, with all available two-row Ger Gerlinghof headers, with all different types of row spacing and all different chopper options, like the MyStar, the Rotor Disk, or also the MS Horizon. Of course, also the proven Optifor platform headers, which you have seen in the videos for serials, can be mounted on the Quantum Pro very easy. A platform header width from 125 up to 200 centimeters are available for the Quantum Pro. For cutting soya beans, we offer a two-row row crop header based on John Deere picking elements with scattering bars. A header change is possible in less than five minutes. Now let's talk about the big tires. As you can see here on this combine, the Quantum Pro has really big tires mounted. These tires are for best stability and traction. The tires effect a big surface for ground gently harvest with low soil compaction. Of course, we offer also on this machine different types, different types of tires, up to 420 millimeters or 16.5 inches. The driving speed of the combine is 25 kilometers per hour or 15 miles per hour. So moving the machine from a field to the next field is a very easy and fast task for you. The new Combine Quantum Pro is equipped with a unique threshing system. The OptiFlow threshing system has a drum with 400 mm in diameter installed and a special developed beta drum for a gentle and energy saving harvest. The threshing drum speed is 240 to 1600 RPM, so it is possible to harvest with the Combine all seeds. The big concave separation area of 0.35 square meter and the wide wrapping angle of 117 degree are additional features of the unique threshing system of the new combine. Furthermore, the combine has a cleaning system installed with two axial fans, inclusive and optimal wind guidance for, for clean samples and less seed losses. A concave change on the Quantum Pro is possible in less than two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you a concave change on the Combine. For changing the concave, you only have to open the door on the left side of the Combine. After that, you have to open the nuts to replace the cover. Then you use the integrated tool which is delivered with every combine to open another nut. After that you can slide out the concave very easy and change for all seats. Now let's talk about the modernity of the new Combine Quantum Pro. The state of the art technology of the Combine is especially given in the cabin of the Quantum Pro. The cabin 
with a perfect layout offers enough space for a stress-free working day for the driver and operator. It was a big concern of Wintersteiger during the development process to have an eye on operator comfort. Therefore, we succeeded to achieve a low noise level of only 76 decibel in the cabin. For comparison, an average human voice is about 90 decibel during talking. The Wintersteiger quantum combines are the only plot combines in the market that offer a tip over certified cabin for highest operator safety. The Quantum Pro cabin is equipped with a color display for all combine settings and to display the rear camera in reverse gear. The intuitive driving assistance system with fully automatic alleyway management provides a perfect repeatability and each plot is treated exactly the same way. That turns out in more comparable harvesting data and additional comfort and data quality for the driver and operator and of course for the breeder. Now ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the huge engine of the Quantum Pro. The Quantum Pro has a 3.6 liter diesel engine installed from the company Deutz with four cylinders. The power of the engine is 115 horsepower and 500 newton meter in torque. The combine complies to the latest exhaust emission regulations worldwide. That means a stage five engine, of course, with EPA certification for the North American market, as well as a 3A engine for low regulated countries is available on the Quantum Pro. According to the exhaust emission standards, AdBlue is necessary on engines with more than 75 horsepower. So, an AdBlue tank is installed on the right side of the combine, which is matched with the volume of the diesel tank, which is 150 liters. So, a harvesting day without refueling is no problem for the Quantum Pro plot combine. The next feature is, as I told you, the big grain tank. A grain tank volume of 1,500 up to 1,700 liter is available, or 42 bushels to 48 bushels. The special developed distribution auger and unloading auger allows an unloading speed of 10 liter per second. So a 1,700 liter grain tank can be unloaded in less than two minutes and 30 seconds. The big grain tank and the fast unloading are of course essential factors to the plot per day performance of the combine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of my short presentation. Thanks a lot for your attention. I hope I could give you a good overview about the new Wintersteiger plot combine, the biggest plot combine from Wintersteiger, the Quantum Pro. Now it's time for your questions. Back to you, Christopher. That's a funny game, back to you, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the first question uh, also for the Quantum Pro is the cycle time. Can you give us an idea which, what did we measure, which crops, which conditions? Yeah, uh, we measure the cycle time uh, of uh, about 20 seconds on the Quantum Pro. In this 20 seconds, also the sample taking is integrated. So between these 20 seconds, you can uh, take a representative sample in the cabin. So the operator can take it in the cabin. This all is um, possible by an intelligent integration of the Harvest Master weighing systems and the air delivery system and the radar sensors. All right. Another important fact is the mixture-free machine, what is always the, the, the target. Uh, what did we measure and what did we measure plot to plot? Yeah, as you said, a free mixing machine is one of the most important things of a, of a plot combine. And yeah, of course, we also measured the mixture of the Quantum Pro com Combine and the result was that a plot-to-plot -plot mixture is only three grains. That means we are in a per thousand range. What well, is really good. 
I think that's an amazing result. I also think so. Um, the automatic cycle management, which we have on the Quantum, is this available on the Quantum Pro as well? Yes, of course. The automatic cycle management is also available on the Quantum Pro as well. Um, for everybody who don't know what the automatic cycle management is, I want to introduce it uh, very short. Sure. The automatic cycle management is a, is a button which is integrated in the MUFU, which is in the armrest. And when you press this button, the header is cleaning out automatically with air tubes, with pneumatic air tubes. Also, the reel is going down automatically. The cleaning fan in the threshing, uh, threshing case go up to maximum RPM, and you enter the weighing system. So pressing the button a second time, you will go to the, um, to the uh, combine uh, settings which are uh, stored and you can go into the next plot and you have every time the same results because the combine is every time doing the same. All right, so that's a big support for the driver. Yeah. Last question would be uh, the triangular tracks. Are they also available on the Quantum Pro as we have them on the Quantum? Good question, yeah. We are still in process. We are still in development with the triangular tracks um, for the Quantum Pro. We have it on the Quantum and um, we will say that in summer this year, summer 2021, also triangular tracks on the Quantum Pro are available. All right, so th still some developments going on. Of course. And a lot of ideas in our head yeah. and on the paper. Thanks, Christopher, for the presentation. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, that's basically uh, the end of our presentation event of the live stream. Still, I would like to remember you, feel free to ask the questions uh, dedicated to the areas. We will come up with a slide uh, at the end of the presentation in the live stream to contact our area managers. They are available. Of course, we are also available for live demonstrations. For any product, just let us know. There was one question from our participants. The live stream is recorded. It will be in the next days on the Wintersteiger webpage and also available on YouTube. And a very important note in your calendar should be the 2021 Field and Expert Days. We hopefully can go ahead under different conditions maybe, but we are positive to arrange this event for those which joined us 2019, hopefully you remember it was a really nice event, going out on the field, presenting the machines live, giving a hand on the machine, testing, having a look at the results. So this is the plan. Please remember 28th of June to 2nd of July. We hopefully have this event, maybe a hybrid solution with some cameras in the backyard as well and have a live stream, let's see. That's it from my side. Thanks for your participation. We hope we have given you a good overview about the products and the whole Wintersteiger team is looking forward to see you in person soon as usual. Have a nice day, evening and or a good night, good morning, wherever you are.